learned about marine ceramics? We can do a little bit of brainstorming if you want to. But let's get this list made first and then we'll do that. What is brainstorming anyway? Coming up with ideas or a group of ideas. And during this process, we don't we don't narrow down anything, right? We just come up with as many ideas as we can possibly come up with. Okay, then what do we what else is there to know? <coughs> that you're interested in, right? Whether it's something you already know about, depending on the speech requirements, or whether it's something you need to learn about. So for the next speech, it's going to be something that you need to learn about. Because it's a demonstration speech, learn from a culture other than your own. Which I know it makes it sound really hard, doesn't it? It makes it sound like this is going to be, oh my god. But pick something that you're interested in. Are you somebody who likes to cook things? Are you somebody who thinks if I try to cook something, it's not going to turn out well? Like one of my students, she tried to make baklava and started her oven on fire. <laughs> this is probably not her best choice of options for things to do, right? So you could be one of those people who chooses something that's not. You could do henna tattooing. You could show us a martial art. I've had people show us how to play different games from other countries. There's one that I learned in China that I still am not sure how to play. <laughs> but you're certainly welcome to try and teach us how to play Go. It's kind of like a checkers slash Chinese checkers combination. So simple. Try learning shogi. You could teach us that as well. <laughs> I don't know how to do that, but if there's something you could teach us, I had a student who tried to teach us how to do Sudoku. What's that? It's a number patterns game. So, again, there are many options out there other than cooking, but pick something that you're interested in, something that you want to try. I've had many students successfully do cooking things. Of course, if you're going to do cooking, what you do is you demonstrate some of the steps of the process, and then just like they do on TV, you go, Voila, and this is what it looks like when it's done. So they, I've had people do crepes, braided, uh, braided German bread. It's kind of fun. I didn't know how she was going to do that, but that was really cool. Uh, lumpia, I've had people do that. It's kind of like an egg roll. I've had people make a variety of, a variety of foods. Potato latkes, apple skeevers, you name it. I think I, we've tried it in the class. The one that didn't work out very well was cow tongue. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's and that's because... Cow tongue actually tastes good. Well, it, whether you like it or you don't like it, that's, that's not the point. The point is that when you make cow tongue, it has to cook for 45 minutes. And so she, or at least, it has to boil for quite a while. Well, you can't do that in class. And so the only thing she could really do was cut it up and serve it. And she didn't even make a whole big deal out of that, so there really wasn't much demonstration. You know, like, because you could cut it up and make it into tacos, and that would be something different. But she didn't really do that. So this, it was not a very good speech. Uh, I had somebody else try to make jambalaya, but didn't really demonstrate it. Again, it's great that you learn something from another culture, but you have to show us how to do it. Why am I making you do this? Because it's a new way to implement presentational aids gives you something to do with your hands so that you aren't as nervous and you learn how to integrate presentational aids. When I did it, I didn't have the cultural requirement. So what I did was I made a, what is called dump bars and they're like brownie. So all I had to do was bring the pan in and dump all the ingredients in, tell them as I dumped it in, 
stir it up, pour some chocolate chips on the top, and then bring out my pan and say, and this is what it looks like when it's done. It sounds, I think, a little harder than it is, but I think it gives you something to do with your hands, making the speech a little bit easier. Then next time we'll move on to the PowerPoint and having to follow the rules or good guidelines for PowerPoint when you're speaking. I'm getting a little ahead of myself though, so just make sure that you're talking about topics that you're interested in. Personally, I am interested in brownies because they taste good, so that was a good choice for me. <laughs> All right, what else? Talks about general and specific purposes for speeches. Let's put one up first. What are the general purposes? There's three. Inform, persuade, and entertain. What does it say? Purpose. I would say the last one is to entertain. Usually, your speeches fall into these categories. How do you know in this class what you're supposed to do? Tell us. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> Isn't that nice of me? Yeah. I just tell you what you're supposed to do. Usually when someone asks you to speak, they also tell you what to do. They may not say this is an informative speech or this is a persuasive speech, but they're going to tell you what you want or what they want. So inform, persuade, or entertain. Here you're just providing information. That's what I expect you to do in the demonstration speech. Just provide us some information. How do you make salsa? Well, even in the last speech, some of us informed, some of us persuade, and I think there was one or two that was kind of entertaining. So I think it depends on your topic and how you present your topic. Right, and the last one I did not tell you whether it was inform, persuade, or entertain, because it was just supposed to be something you believe in. So it could have been any of these. Most often though, an entertaining speech is just meant to entertain. It's not necessarily meant to be educational. It's not necessarily meant to persuade you one way or the other. It's just meant to make you laugh. It's just for entertainment purposes. So if I don't tell you, things may fall in both categories. If you're not told, again, things might fall in both categories. For this one, the next one, we're just informing you don't need to persuade us that we should try to make this at home, although we could, but it's not necessary to tell us that. The next one though, I'm gonna ask you to persuade. I'm gonna ask you to actually ask the audience to do something. Persuade them to try or to do something different. And we're, we'll do two persuasive speeches because we've done Two informative speeches so far. Actually, your first one was informing us about yourself. And then the I believe was either inform or persuade. Then we're going to do inform, two persuasive speeches, and our impromptu speech. And the impromptu speech may just <laughs> be entertaining, and that's okay. Questions about the general purposes? Are you still with me? Am I still with you? <laughs> Okay, then you said specific purpose. And what does the book say about specific purpose? Nothing. The book can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> you must have gotten out of your son. <laughs> can't imagine. 14-year-old <laughs> humor, right? Okay. What is the specific purpose? Tells you precisely what you're going to be speaking about. Like what you're going to be informing them about or what you're persuading them to do. Actually, you know what? I'm going to just make this simple. It tells you precisely what you're going to talk about, right? Specific. I know in the book, it calls it different things, but I am going to just say that this is like your thesis. Exactly.
exactly what you're going to tell us about. You say one sentence summary of your speech. If you were doing this in the outline that we've talked about, that's where I would expect to find your specific purpose. It's in your thesis. What exactly are you going to talk about? Anybody thinking about their next speech, what they want to do? So what would be your specific purpose? Okay. So a specific purpose might be, I'd like to share with you how to play dreidel. And then you could teach us how to do that. I would like to teach you how to make matzah. That's a one sentence summary of your speech. Or let's explore how to salsa dance gives us a specific purpose, right? And all you're doing is informing. <clears throat> That's where I would put it. I know in the book it tries to say they're different things, but to me, they're really close to the same. All right, what else? There's no more vocabulary words in there. There's lots more? Okay, well, tell me what they are. <coughs> Central idea. Actually, I'm going to say that the central idea, my broken eraser, Central idea, what does it say in the book? Okay, so they're saying that's the thesis, right? I'm going to say the central idea is more like your preview of your main point. It still can be one set that tells us the things you're going to talk about. So it's just giving us a central idea of what your speech is about. If on the test it asks you what is the central idea, you're certainly welcome to say a thesis in one sentence that make your speech. I am certain, though, that I didn't ask anything about that because I don't necessarily agree with the way the book explains it. But I've taught out of a few different public speaking texts, and this guy you're actually studying out of the 11th edition, and he just put out the 12th edition. And I think I've taught out of every one since the second. <laughs> I know I have a copy of the second edition at home, so either I taught out of it or I took my class out of it. <laughs> one of the two, which is only about three years apart. So, what else does it say in chapter five? wants you to take from the speech. So I showed you the outline, right? <coughs> Where should they get this from? The body. From the conclusion. Yes, from the body, but also from the conclusion. Because you're going to, in your introduction, you're going to tell them what you're going to tell them. Then you're going to tell them in the body part, right? And then you're going to tell them what you told them. When you are telling them what you told them, that's when they will find the residual message. You should be telling them three different times, but just in case, you want to hit it home in your conclusion. So that's why I say don't say, in conclusion, because guess what happens? Your audience shuts you off. You said in conclusion, I don't have to pay attention anymore. You're done, sit down. No, this is the part where we're hitting at home, where we're saying, I have shared with you, da-da-da, in this part of the message, one, two, three, 
and then slam dunk it with your clincher, right? You want to send them home in their nice little sandwich. Here's the message that I gave you. So residual message we usually find in the conclusion. It's what they need to take home with them. What is that one thing you're going to say at the very end of your speech that will make the audience remember your speech? The clincher. The clincher. Yes. So we have our attention catcher, which brings their attention in and they pay attention to you for your five to seven minutes or however long your speech is going to be. And then you clinch it up at the end and they take that home and they remember that. All right, what else is in chapter five that we need to know? these before but just for a refresher if you're stuck and you're having trouble coming up with a topic you can choose a word or have your friend choose a word And now, I want you to help me think of everything that you think of when you hear the word hospital. Blood. I'm sorry? Blood. Blood. No. <laughs> I've seen a lot of it, but still. A gurney. Germ? A gurney. Gurney. I'm going to put germ too just because it sounds fun. <laughs> but. <laughs> Ultrasound. Ultrasound. Good. Elevator. With the Mayo Clinic, I'll just see a lot more people. What else? The ding. You were just there, weren't you? The hospital listening to the dinging noises, I'm sure. Scary movies. <laughs> what hospital 
are you going to? <laughs> That's what I'm going to. It's the one I'm watching on movies. Oh, there you go. The one that you're watching on the movies? Yeah. The glass bowl. Glass. You have that big glass bowl. Glass. Gift yes, shop. But you know what else that demands clinic they have is a naked man hanging on the wall like this. Yeah. <laughs> almost like Jesus. Yeah, almost. Oh, okay, we're gonna put that. Naked man. All right, what else? Gift what shop. Else? Department? Yeah. Pianos. Gift shop. Okay. 